In 1947, Oxford Don C.S. Lewis once remarked that it was the rarest thing in the world to hear a rational discussion of vivisection, or as we would call it today, animal experimentation. Well, at this summer school, we are trying to do what seemed impossible, at least impossibly rare, to C.S. Lewis. We have tried to have a rational debate on the use of animals in research. And this, in fact, is the second summer school of the Oxford Centre for Animal Ethics, this year in partnership with Cruelty Free International. In 2013, the Centre was approached by Cruelty Free International to commission an independent report on the ethics of using animals in research. The Centre put together a working party of academics, ethicists and scientists from around the world. The report was published earlier this year and is entitled Normalising the Unthinkable. The report concluded that animal experimentation needs to be denormalised and deinstitutionalised. And this has been the subject of much debate at this year's summer school. Cruelty Free International has partnered with the Oxford Centre for Animal Ethics because we think it's really important to put the issue of animal experiments at the centre of the moral agenda. One of the things that also concerns us is that people can be progressive about a whole range of other values, but animal experimentation gets left off the agenda. It was important for us as Cruelty Free International to partner with the Oxford Centre for Animal Ethics because we wanted to work with the leading thinkers in the world. We didn't influence the outcome of the report, but what we're particularly delighted to see is that the leading academics that have put this piece of work together have said very clearly that animal experimentation is morally unacceptable. I think there are a number of philosophical objections to animal exper experiments from the point of view of ethics. Some people will argue that um, animals suffer and it's wrong to cause suffering, and some people will argue that we shouldn't be the kind of people who bring about the suffering of animals. And some people will argue that animals have rights, that's controversial, but even if they don't have rights, it might be argued that we have duties towards them. We do to other animals things that we would find abhorrent if we did to each other. And we have to ask ourselves, why is it that we don't do these things to each other? Because from a scientific perspective, we can learn a lot more, a lot more quickly, and have far b uh, greater benefits for ourselves if we use people, for example, in all the experiments we're doing now on other animals. We don't do those things to other people because they have certain values, certain traits that we want to protect. And my argument is that other animals, particularly mammals and, for example, non-human primates, have exactly the same traits. And we cannot do things to them that we're not willing to do to ourselves. I am looking at Directive 2010-63, which is the latest piece of legislation coming from the European Union uh, aimed at protecting animals involved in uh, scientific experimentation. Specifically, I've been looking at the way it impacts upon the Animal Scientific Procedures Act and introduces uh, notions such as the value of animals, their, their sentience, and uh, the way we should look after each individual animal rather than the aggregated mass. I see two kinds of problems. One is an institutional problem. Scientists are used to doing things the way they're used to doing them. And that may mean using large numbers of animals to achieve certain kinds of research goals, and they're simply not used to the idea or practiced the idea of doing without them. And then secondly, there's the personal, if you will, psychological difficulty that has to be overcome. Uh, scientists may tend to do a thing I'm calling splitting. That is, they, they split on the one hand animals that they see as pets to be loved and to be cherished, the other hand animals to be uh, experimented upon and used for whatever purpose uh, they wish. Uh, 
getting scientists to recognize that the dog you have in your home is no different than the dog you may be researching on in the laboratory, that's a very hard task. My talk here at the summer school was mainly centered on the scientific problems with animal experimentation. And what I did was flip the usual ethical question that's asked, is not asked whether it's ethical for animals, but asked whether it's ethical for humans. And what I did was that I presented what scientific data we had that truly and overwhelmingly show that animal experiments are very poor predictors of what we're going to find in humans. So for example, there was a study um, published in the British Medical Journal in 2007, and they looked at six different treatments for five different diseases that included stroke and hemorrhage and head injury and osteoporosis. And they compared all the animal data for those six different treatments with all the human data for those six treatments. And, they, and they, what they found was that the animal data matched the human data only half the time. In other words, the animal data was no more likely to predict whether those treatments would be safe and effective in humans than a toss of the coin. As far as the theological objections to animal experiments are concerned, uh, there is not one particular passage in the Bible that you could name and point to where it says, thou shalt not do experiments on animals. And, uh, but this is not uh, a problem because uh, the Bible as a whole, both in its Jewish writing and its Christian writing, is uh, a bias towards uh, mercy, kindness, justice, towards those beings which are on the margins of society, which are not regarded highly by the rest of society and which suffer a lot. And so uh, in the context of the Bible, I think um, there is um, an argument for uh, caring for animals, for not doing harm to sentient beings, for doing justice to every um, sentient being and all creatures of God, including animals. And so from this point of view, I think that we are one family and that we belong together. As the, the present Pope Francis um, said recently, we are one family and you're not supposed to hurt uh, members of your family in a way that it might profit you if it ever does. The philosophical objections to animal experiments focus on the fact that animals are not just things or tools that we can use, but that they have certain characteristics or capacities uh, like sentience or like being the subject of a life that give them basic rights. In order to express what we find unthinkable about animal research, we need more than a justice rights-based perspective. We need an ethic of care perspective, which says that it is because these are animals who are vulnerable to us and dependent upon us, that what we're doing to them is so wrong. Looking at the issue of the scientific validity and human relevance of, of animal experiments, the first uh, showed that you can't uh, gain much useful information at all from testing a new drug in animals, whether it's rats, mice, dogs or monkeys. What that drug does, whether it's safe or not in an animal, um, does not apply effectively to humans. Uh, and the second thing I talked about was um, the genetics, the genetic differences between species, how humans, monkeys and dogs and rats are all genetically different. So not only do we now know why animals are poor models in experiments, we also know uh, that we're so different animals can never serve as good models in research for human beings. I think language is, is critically important, far more in, important than we often realise because the use of language shapes our attitudes, our, the identities of, of people or groups. And a lot of the language we use, we don't really think about. It's when we stop and begin to analyze that language, we can begin to see what the underlying ideas are, the ideology, the power structures. And then we can begin to ask ourselves, is this right? Does it make sense? What's really going on here? For example, the way they portray those in favor of animal testing as being scientists, and those who are not in favor of animal testing as being the non-scientists. So it's the knowing against the unknowing.
At the summer school, I've been talking about uh, the regulation of animal experiments and the harm-benefit assessment that's supposed to happen, which means that the harms to the animals are balanced against the possible benefits to the humans. We don't think that's a very good way of justifying uh, the use of animals in experiments. And in my talk, I was um, talking about how the benefits to humans are often overestimated and the chances of animal experiments actually benefiting humans is, is underestimated and, and really that can be quite an important factor. So what I've been talking about at this year's summer school is um, captivity and related concepts of freedom in relation to non-human primates used in vivisection. So considering four different case studies, the stories surrounding these individuals, what happens to them when they're in the lab in terms of captivity, what happens to them after they leave the lab, whether or not that life when they leave the lab is put simply worth living, whether or not they can ever have a happy ending. Um, the conclusion that I would draw from it is that sanctuary is potentially the best we can do for these animals, but by virtue of the fact they're non-domesticated species, they can't ever live in their natural habitat, and therefore it still isn't a happy ending for them. The problem of getting scientists to adopt and embrace a more robust three R's ethic, the idea of refinement, replacement, and reduction of the use of animals. Many of them see it simply as a bureaucratic hurdle they have to step over. Uh, they don't uh, take on board uh, emotionally, intellectually, the idea that this is an actual requirement. Uh, it's a moral requirement, it's a scientific requirement. So I spoke about um, my efforts to try to get scientists to think about these more fully, and also the resistance that I faced uh, with that. Uh, and it was a tremendous amount of resistance. So uh, those of us who want to reduce the amount of uh, vivisection or uh, animal testing, we have a hard road uh, to hoe because of uh, entrenched institutional and personal um, uh, uh, resistance to, um, to change. Thank you.